Have you yeah. thought about just buying a different microwave? Nope. <laughs> okay. Never considered Saving it. Saving a lot of money on that microwave as you're absorbing a shit ton of fucking radiation. <laughs> yeah, but the popcorn comes out perfect. Oh, good. <laughs> this episode is made possible by our therapy partners, Dirty B, Myra, and Pickett. Pickett! From fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Pod Therapy. Real people, real problems, and real therapists. You can submit your questions anonymously at podtherapy.net. Or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. Broadcasting from the churn, that man is the man formerly known as Dr. Jim. That's Whitney. Damn it. I'm Nick. It's time for some pod therapy. Pew, pew, Texas. Whitney's not here. Welcome to well, it's Mental script, so I Health <laughs> Awareness Month. Beep, 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 beep. It is May, and it is officially the month that you are meant to be aware of mental health. It is the month that you are legally obligated to share this show with somebody that doesn't know about it, and it is the month where we are having our first ever Patreon pledge drive. We're going full NPR on this bitch, except you can't call in. You have to go to patreon.com slash therapy and to incentivize. Why can't they call in? Well, we should create a hotline. That would be a great idea. No, I do think what we should do is we should... St- we should make this show very interesting, but then stop it. Oh, okay. Every every five minutes. Yeah. I then do oh, you know, twenty God minutes. God damn! Of pledge. I hate the pledge drive. I know. That's the worst. I know. And you know what? It always happens. I know you had somewhere you wanted to go with. Yeah. This. Fuck it. Who cares? It always happens when like I'm really excited about a new episode of Rick Steves. That's when it's gonna. You know, pop and it's out. always yeah. By the way. Yeah, our our it's channel like, is supported by listeners like you. Yeah. So anyway, welcome to the uh, the Pod Therapy Pledge Drive. And to incentivize you to consider going to patreon.com slash therapy. Is that it? Come on in, Rick. Come come on in. He's nope. Nope. He's nope. not coming. Nope. nope. All right. Here. Well, eh, fuck our show. Uh go to patreon.com slash therapy because we have a set of one of a kind collectible Funko Pops. Those little figurine guys. For each host of the show, and we are raffling them off. And here's how the raffle rules work: If you oh, are I'm glad we're talking about this Mental Health Month, no, 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 I know, no, yeah, but like uh, I thought we were going to have this conversation. We did in the email. We did, and but you said then I wasn't sounds sure. good. Yeah, but I didn't mean it. Oh, Nick, <laughs> that ship has sailed. My man. go ahead. Yeah, you need to answer a lot more no, of your no, email no, no. correspondence. I, but here's the by thing: the way. I just no, I well use an email that I check. Uh, fucking all right, all right fine. anyway don't go don't, ahead don't threaten me with a good time i'll spam all your goddamn emails <laughs> your father's new dick has been in me there's that anyway if you would like to win this one-of-a-kind collectible set uh we are auctioning or not auctioning we're raffling it off and here are the rules if you are on our patreon in the month of may that includes all of our previous members and any new members that join at any point in may if you are in there at, at a uh, Theradactyl or higher, that's the $10 level or higher, we will enter a raffle ticket for you for every $10 that you are giving to the show. So if, so if you, you're in at like $17 right now, you, you want to just round up to 20 You want to get to that 20 That's yeah. right. And if you are 20 you're getting two tickets. 30 you're getting three tickets. And if you're getting, if you're, if you're paying $21, yep. You should knock that down to twenty because yeah. that extra dollar is doing, round doing down. you no good. Yeah, yes. yeah. Or Get kicking the other nine. That, that's fine. You should too, only so. round up. Yeah, <laughs> rounding up is a good always choice. round up. So if you are a therapal or therapod and you would like a shot at this for the month of May, why don't you jump up to that therodactyl level? Nothing's going to keep you there forever, but jump in, jump into the water, and we will enter in a raffle ticket for every ten dollars you have pledged on the Patreon. And uh, we will do a drawing at the end of May. Winner takes all four. And if you would like to see photos of these, they are popping onto social media on May 1st. So if you're a Patreon of the show, that is when this episode is airing. Go to our Instagram or go to our Facebook or go to our Twitter or go to our thread. And you will see uh, at any Pod Therapy Guys or Pod Therapy uh, site a photo of our little adorable Funko Pops. I love them. Jacob's character has the most accessories. Uh, he has the audio headset. Yeah. He has, I think, two dogs. And two dogs, yeah. And a beer. Yeah. Yeah. Whitney has a purse. I have no accessories because I didn't know we were getting accessories. And then you have uh, barbells or dumbbells? Those are dumbbells. Those are dumbbells. Yeah. And For capris. Nick, they're always dumbbells. The capris were a really they're classic They're workout choice. pants. Yeah, they look like capris. workout pants, like, from what I can see. Capris. Uh-huh. Anyway. Very, very uh, nice. Are we going to sign them? 
Yeah, we can. Yeah, w- winner we can should. decide. Yeah, if, if the winner wants them, uh, sign. We'll, we'll sign them. Yeah, let's just sign them because I don't want. I can't. My I can't handle the winner saying no. Please don't sign them. Oh yeah. So we <laughs> should just go ahead and sign them. A bigger <laughs> kick in yeah. the junk. What so if that decreases the value? I, and now well, people I, don't want to sign up. I don't care up. if it does. What yeah. if the winner only wants I some host to sign? I don't. <laughs> what if the winner's like, hear. you know what? Keep them all, but send me Nick's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just that one. <laughs> I want you to I sign want. all of them except for Nick's, but I only want Nick's. I only want that one, please. Yeah, you're taking them all if you win. That's the deal. And you know what? fuck you we're signing them so that's also going to happen so patreon.com slash therapy for the whole month of may we are also going to have a special product in the store pod therapy bait shop you can get our 2024 uh special product that is going to be uh, all proceeds donated to yep. charity and so check a, that uh, one out as well it's a mystery product mystery um you will know about it as soon as i do yep so, PodTherapyBaitShop.com. Uh, By the time you hear this episode, we Nick always do the t-shirts, but I kind of feel like doing something different this time. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I got the Pod Therapy doggy bandana, and I put it on uh, Josie, and it was great. I did see the picture. It off. Yeah, she did okay. She uh, ripped it off. I, t- you know what? Your dog doesn't just, do bandanas. Nah, she doesn't do collars, man. If she uh. can get that collar, she's she's a puppy, mm-hmm. so every fucking thing right. is getting bit on. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I got it on there for a couple of minutes, long enough to take the photos. So All right. she posed, and then it promptly came off. But maybe your doggies will be better behaved than Josie. Go to Pod Therapy Bait Shop. My dogs are happy to wear bandanas. Oh, yeah. that's puts bandanas on our dogs all the time. Do you guys have pod therapy bandanas? No. All right, we can fix that. Oh no, we're, we would not put pod therapy. <laughs> would you put on audio guy life coaching bandanas? That's all we put on them <laughs> exclusively. But they're, but they're homemade, <laughs> so no money goes back into the shop. <laughs> They are intentionally not in the shop. Yeah. Anyway, it's going to be a fun month. Uh, We've got our Reddit AMA coming up this month. We are still uh, figuring out the date on that because Nick doesn't like checking his emails. Uh, Mm -hmm. But we will get that out, and uh, that will be awesome, too. That's our big, huge annual reach, and hopefully we'll be able to introduce the show to the world again and uh, get mental health out there front and center and get people talking about it. So thank all of you who do support this show uh, and who have joined us throughout the years. Whether you're just a regular listener or whether you've taken that extra step to go to Patreon and support the show financially, um, we have been running the show now for six, almost seven years. Or I think we're in our seventh seasons. So we're wrapping up a, a seventh year here since January 2nd, 2018. And uh, it is only possible because of all of you that has made this thing worth doing and it has uh, funded it so that it can be done. So thank you so much for everybody who makes this possible. We do appreciate you joining us on this project. And we've got some great questions for today's show, starting off with a letter titled Something <laughs> from Mike. Excellent script writing, Nick. You're, you're crushing it today. I didn't I didn't put that. That was what it said. You're the script writer. That's what it said. <laughs> that, just, I, that, that was the title. I copied and that's pasted. That's probably what I wrote as a placeholder. I need a grumpy <laughs> old men arguing. This? I need a grumpy old men arguing <laughs> drop. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody make me a grumpy Jesus old men arguing. Christ. You should proofread you the letters. So hard to please. No, I just <laughs> write the God. script. You're the guy. You're the proofreader. You're the checker. That's your role. You're pre-op. Whatever. All right. Something from Mike. Dear pod therapist, I have a dilemma that I could use some input on. I have a very complicated and currently estranged relationship with my dad. He's been a clinical narcissist since my sister and I were in high school. He's a retired physics teacher and incredibly intelligent when it comes to math and sciences. But unfortunately, he fell prey to the cult of Trumpism. Our relationship has always been strained, but when he decided to attend the insurrection and stick it to the it was Antifa story, we decided it was no longer worth the aggravation to try and maintain a relationship. He is getting older, and the end is inevitably getting closer. I've been having... Because he's doing things like traveling cross-country to go to insurrections. And starting wars. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, probably... That, that, and gets that'll, closer that'll when you do those things. will take time off your... Yeah, your people die at that shit. Getting closer, and I've been having a feeling that I should at least send him a letter telling him that I love him, but I don't like what he's become and won't be part of his life as long as he's still embracing his current beliefs. I know that this will not make a difference to him, but I feel like I need to do this for me. I'd like to hear your professional therapist and audio guy life coach opinions. 
I really appreciate you and the show. Thanks a bunch, Mike. Man, that is tough. How do you guys feel about this idea of, like, somebody has a deeply different life philosophy, worldview, religious view, political view, and at some point it gets so bad or toxic that you feel you need to excommunicate them? Is that used to be a religious mm-hmm. move? Like, mm-hmm. and that was one of the things. Like, oh, don't be like the crazy religious nuts. They excommunicate everybody that disagrees with them. Right? How silly! But I feel like the shoes on the other foot in the modern era, and a lot of times it goes the other way now. Well, I think we are excitable. I think we as a, as a society are are very excitable about these things, and I feel like we we oftentimes feel like we have to take stands. Mm. And I think that's in in some cases, I think that's part of the problem. Right uh, now, part of the problem is. You're, you got a dad going and, and participating in something, in something yeah. that you strongly disagree with. That's, that's problem A. But problem B can be the reaction to it where it's like, no, I have to take a stand. I right. cannot possibly speak to someone that believes that that insurrection was anything less than a full insurrection and, and those people should be punished for doing that. And that gets, that gets foggy. Right. That gets foggy it, quick. It does. That gets really weird. Because, I mean, like, for years and years, it was like, yeah, yeah, that's my crazy neighbor, or that's my dad, that's my uncle, that's my that's my granddad, that's my grandmother, whatever it is, and they believe in, in this political theory. Uh, it's batshit crazy. Right. Uh, see you at Thanksgiving. I think the division wasn't quite as severe as it is now. Yeah. But I think I think, I think a lot of that is is from, we feel like we have to take stands oh, on it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, and I... I, 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 uh, yes, I definitely agree that we do feel like we have to take a stand. And I think it's, uh, I don't know, this is just my own personal opinion, but mm-hmm. I think part of that is because that's kind of the narrative that is always like being perpetrated. Right. It's, right. Uh, it's us versus them. Are you oh, with yeah. us or are you against us? Oh, yeah. I don't think this is I, yeah. uh, you know, an individual's fault. No, yeah. This is I don't, yeah. I don't either. Yeah. I think it's, it's just, uh, that's just kind of the nature of the society it's being set up to be black or white it's being set up that we have two choices on everything and you can either make the correct choice or the wrong choice yeah and and, you know that's the that's political uh and and there's republicans and democrats that that's religion that's whatever yeah and there's this slippery slope mentality that i really feel like has unfolded and uh, you know what Uh, here we are sitting here like oh it never used to be like this before and i'm sure like during the civil war probably was there's like hey you're one of those damn yankees you're dead to me son you know like i'm sure that that was a thing but like there's this slippery slopeism that I really dislike, and, and I, I've always struggled to language it. I think I've come to calling it, like, the enfranchisement of a person. Mm. So, like, if you work at McDonald's, you are McDonald's. If you eat at McDonald's, you are McDonald's. So, like, if, if we go deep and we discover that the McDonald's Corporation donated to a candidate in uh, Australia right. that suppressed somebody or did something bad— you, Big Mac eater, are culpable for all those choices. Right. You endorse those choices, and you've practically caused whatever the carnage well, was we can in use, that other. We carnage. can use real examples. We Chick-fil-A. can use Chick Fil A. Yeah. We there can just go. say Chick Fil A. Right. I mean, there are many people who will not eat at a Chick Fil A. Right. Uh, not just because they're closed on Sundays because they hate money, uh, oh, but because really sucks. they are uh, not kind to uh, everyone. So, and, and like I'm completely fine with that choice right like sure. i mean i there's a bunch of products you that don't I eat just chick-fil-a not, don't eat chick-fil-a uh, yeah there's a ton of products that i don't want anything to do with or brands that i don't want anything to do with because i super duper dislike how they they conduct business or what yeah, they stand for great. what they've done great that's my choice but like if i'm against nike and then and then nick comes in wearing nike i'm not looking at nick and being like hey i associate you with the choices of that larger brand and in, so I don't know, but like I don't want to minimize Mike and no, what he's think... talking about because obviously an insurrection is a significant. Thing. Oh, I sure. think this. I think this is partly social media. Okay, I think this is because social media gives gives us all a platform to have an opinion. Okay, we all have an opinion, and we are putting those opinions out there, and those opinions are valuable. Mm-hmm. Like I am giving you my opinion. Yeah. That is an extremely valuable thing because I feel it's like we have to stand for things. That's now. it. Like there's an audience, and, right. and there is, and like we are more because visible. we're creating an audience, right? And I mean, and you know, us, you know, podcasters, it's it's a bit different because like, yeah, we are we we have an audience uh, that isn't just on our social media, right? But you know, everyone now has an audience, and so everyone feels That's true. Not even entitled, but 
feels as though there is a mandate right. to, to take stands on things, to take sides on things. Right. And it can't just be like, yeah, yeah, that's happening. The whole, the whole Chick-fil-A thing is happening. I didn't really eat Chick-fil-A before anyway. I, I kind of don't care. Right. So using... Like, that's not an okay stance to take. Right. Yeah. I, I, kind of using your example, Nike. Okay, so yeah. let's say you had an issue with Nike exactly the way you framed it. I came in wearing Nike. Uh-huh. I think part of the issue comes from just this idea that, like, you know, if we all stuck together... Nike would learn their lesson. Right. right. And because right. you are not holding the line. Right. Then You're enabling now them. you are enabling it. And then that, so now it becomes like a very personal thing. Right. And it's really hard to disconnect from that. I get that. You know, yeah. and I don't, I don't know, I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know why oh, that's you a know, thing. It now. might, it might partially be uh, a taking back of a power. Mm. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like the whole go woke, go broke thing. You know, Budweiser oh, yeah. having a, right. a, a trans uh, spokesperson, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and, and then like we as a group, yeah, I'm using we obviously as uh, me, Nick, and Jim, uh, yeah, who, yes. who hate Budweiser, yeah, uh, specifically. No, uh, you know, sponsor the show for different Budweiser. reasons. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm only mad that they haven't given us money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's my only beef. No, but then then people get to look at that and go, okay, I disagree with encouraging trans people to, I don't know, to be happy or to be part of society. I don't, I don't know what people are pissed about. Right. Uh, but whatever they're pissed about, they're pissed about it. And so now me and my fellow like thinkers, we can do something about this now. Right. We yeah. can take this power back from this multi-billion dollar corporation and we can make them suffer. Yeah. We can make, we can hit them where it hurts. We can hit them right in the, in that pocketbook. I mean, I think that might be part of it. I think you're right in the sense that like, and I think social media and how connected we are now, it makes it easier for grassroots movements to actually have an impact, which is good in a lot of ways. I mean, I can put opinions out on the internet as fast as I can type. Yes. And I I think, yeah. So then it kind of gives you this sense of like, we do have some power and if we all stick together, we can make some change. And I do think that that does, yeah, definitely yeah. have an impact. That's in the un- macro, ironically, yeah. the same people are against unions. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. ironic. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a little. That's a little weird. In the macro, I think we're right, but I, I want to zoom in on Mike's predicament, right? Because if you have, I don't a, know what Mike's stance on Bud Light is. Oh, that's we do need to write him and ask. Yeah, if you have a parent that attempted to overthrow the United States government, uh-huh. who was part of a mob, and who hasn't? Yeah, and, and <laughs> many of us have that parent. But like part of a mob that that fell upon the Congress, uh-huh. disrupted all the government, chanted hang the vice president. Trials. Yeah. The president is currently on trial about this. I, I can appreciate that that rises to a different level. Like mm-hmm. if, if I like you guys know that I'm religious ish and it, you tolerate it, it never has affected our friendship. Mm-hmm. But if my religion said that I needed to use violence to like you know, hurt somebody or, you know, steal back. Which I believe or, technically it does. Re, yeah, somewhere in there. But yeah. if I obeyed that part. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, if, I, if I was obedient to that part specifically <laughs> yeah. and just didn't I, cherry pick I what the fuck I wanted to do. it absolutely says use violence. Yeah, absolutely. If I, you know, for instance, wear a, yeah. a piece of clothing that has mixed fabrics. Yeah. And I've allowed stoning. you to live, yeah. you know, despite and, your and polyester. Frankly, you know. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, it hasn't gone unnoticed. But obviously if I... To your kindness. Yeah, as he's over there eating his lobster. <laughs> wrapped in bacon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds delicious. And why hasn't somebody period? brought me a lobster wrapped in bacon? <laughs> yeah, really. But no, like, I mean, that I can appreciate why that is a, a level of magnitude bigger than, ooh, I just like that you're wearing Nike or ooh, you yeah, yeah. Chick-fil-A. Or even like a MAGA hat. Yeah, mm-hmm. your, your views are different even than the other group, right? Like, what Mike's dad did is different than your neighbor who voted for Trump. Yes. It's bigger than the MAGA hat person. Yeah. It's bigger than uh, Nikki Haley or any other politician that was like, you know, nearby and sort of complicit, but like didn't do it. Like homeboy went and like yeah. attacked and like that. I don't know. I almost look at that as like, well, he attended, but I don't, we also don't know like what his intention right. was either. So but like, at the very I guess least by being there, he's, he's sure. enabling people sure. who are doing violence. I can appreciate where yeah. Mike might feel that sense of like, dude, I have to disassociate from you, yeah. man. Like that is a different level. It's like if you joined a game. Well, it's an action. Yeah. yeah. You've, you've taken an action. Like dad has taken an action. That is a different level. And I mean, it's an action beyond buying a hat because or, or giving to a campaign. Because I cutting off a family member if you found out a family member did crime, right? Like if a family member came out to you and was like, hey, man, I'm in the mafia. And you'd be like, oh, I 
am against you. I don't, I don't feel good about what you do. I know you hurt people for a living. Like I could see somebody taking a, a, a position of saying, I, could I go can't for a new dishwasher. You. I was going to say, like, under circumstances in which you benefit from it. I yeah, think we just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The TVs fall we off trucks all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, this is my wedding day. Thanks for the 60 It's end. possible you know, that one of it. the appliances in my house is directly from Associated uh, the, with the, the mafia. mafia. Yeah. I don't know. But where do you draw the line? You know, because I, I dislike drawing lines over political reasons because I feel like it, it's just like we talk about in the past, Nick, where we talk about uh, boundaries and relationships, right? Not issuing ultimatums because you ultimately have to back that up all the time to pull the trigger. That's it. But that's what drawing a line is. Right. Drawing a line is an ultimatum. Yeah. I mean, but I, I don't like the nuclear if you do option this, of you're dead to me. Yeah. It, I'll so never talk to you this, again. If you go participate in an insurrection at, yeah. the, at the Capitol, then I'm going to disassociate from you. Gosh. Yeah. It's a tough line I to draw. I think... Like, I think it all has to be case by case. It does. Here's how I do it. Um, I, I look at it from a perspective first of, I, I always kind of look at, uh, the first thing I look at is what do I want from this relationship? Okay. What would I like to have? And what kind of boundaries do I need to set in order to achieve that? Right. Well, you need a safe word. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> pineapple. And then as we continue, that boundary may have to move. Right. Right. You know, where is, you know, like if I'm trying to put myself in Mike's position. Okay. So if a family member of mine was, was involved in that, my family is very important to me. I want to maintain contact with my family. I want us to be together on holidays. I want to be Mm -hmm. able to celebrate birthdays. I want all that stuff. So I can kind of set that boundary of like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to, we're going to hang out. We're going to associate with each other. We're not going to talk about X, Y, and Z. Right. We're just not going to have those conversations. Yeah. Okay. And then, so that's the boundary. Right. That boundary gets crossed. Then now I need to draw a new boundary. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, well, maybe we're going to spend less time to each, with each other. Right. Maybe we're going to have fewer phone calls. Maybe we're going to be doing X, Y, and Z. Right. Oh, that's still not working. Okay. I got to move that boundary again. Right. Right. And so that was, that, that's my approach to situations like that is I just kind of look at what I want out of that relationship. What kind of boundaries do I need to be able to set in order to maintain that relationship? Right. And the other thing too, is it does take a little bit of constant uh, cognitive reframing, right? Because in that particular situation, I may have uh, a different perspective on things and feel like, oh, wow, you know, from my perspective, it sure feels like you just tried to overthrow democracy. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty important to me. Seems like and your only hard. regret is that you didn't do right. it. Right, yeah. and it's, uh, so it's kind of hard for me to kind of look the other way on that, you know? Um on the other and hand, I, what's democracy done for me lately? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, damn good point. Chick fil A's closed on Sundays. I'm yeah, the one that's still America. renting at <laughs> age 43. Yeah. No, but I think. Uh, You're not 43. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your microwave. I again. was. <laughs> uh, no, um, but, you know, in, in that position, I, I do kind of look at things like I'm trying to see this from the most positive light possible. Mm-hmm. Like, is he a bad guy? Or is he kind of a victim of brainwashing and yeah, of kind of just kind of falling into that, that culture, Yeah, you know, and it is, it's very difficult, you know, when you put yourself in an environment where you're just getting the same messages over and over sure. all the yeah. time, um, you know, it, it can feel very frustrating and like, you just want to grab this person and shake them and like, what the hell are you thinking? But in the same way also that like with you know, if you're a parent and your kid is hanging around this group of, you know, a bad influence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're going to, you know, break into the blockbuster and steal yes. VHS tapes. Yes. And yeah. You're kind of like, uh, like you do, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, you just want to grab the radio them, shack. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They're going to wear one of those scary yeah. movie masks. Or they yeah. keep walking on the lawn, yeah. you know, yeah. just whatever this influence is. Or they listen yeah. to Ozzy Osbourne yeah. and the rock yeah. and roll music. Yeah. Those things. Um, so anyway, so you'd I, that's, send the that's letter. My, you'd send the letter that says, hey, dad, I love you. I'm thinking of you. I well, no, I wouldn't well. even, I, I don't know if I'd even do that. I don't know if I would hear, but again, like I, I can't say what Mike should do. Here's what I would do in that situation. If I felt I needed to reach out to him, I would reach out to him, but I wouldn't do like, I love you, but blank. You wouldn't even bring it up. No, because I think some of those boundaries you don't have to actually write. Right. You don't actually have to say like the other person doesn't always need to know that the boundary is set. Yeah, that's fair. Sometimes it, the way that I, I look at it is it, it, it's kind of like a 
again, like I've used this analogy before in, in therapy, it's like a game of tennis where if I can't communicate with the other person, but I'm trying to teach them tennis, I will respond to the things that they do well and I ignore the things that they don't. That's how they learn. Yeah. yeah. So if that if, is a weird analogy, if they, well, teaching I'm, someone I'm that not, you can't communicate with tennis is just an odd thing to no, do. No, but let You've me obviously let me, let me never paint the picture. <laughs> let me paint the picture. If uh, they're over there and they have their tennis racket and they grab a baseball and they hit it over, you I'm not going to hit it back. Yeah. If they throw a football over, I'm not going to throw it back. Once they hit a Rude. tennis ball over, okay, now I'm going to hit that back. I'll spike it in their fucking I'm, mouth. I'm teaching them. I'm kind of teaching <laughs> now you them. know. Based off of how tennis. I react, I'm teaching them right. where my limits are. So if this is my dad, you know, I'll, I'll call, I'll say hi, talk, whatever. But when he talks politics, talks, nah, I won't respond. No, nope, I'm not going to respond to that. Mm-hmm. Or if he calls me or he's emailing me about stuff like that, okay. I'm probably not going to respond. I, yeah. I, I, I would handle this approach or I, I would handle this situation by setting the boundaries simply by response yeah. versus no response. I'm on the same page as you. And, and again, I appreciate there are scenarios that can be so extreme. That you say, I don't like think tennis that, lessons, like tennis lessons, mm-hmm. that we can't have a relationship at all, right? Like the I it, saw that Challengers movie this week. That's why I think that was yeah, that's, tennis. Ah, but like the example of the mob, or in this case, the insurrection, I could see it rising to the level where you're like, hey, um, I don't know that we can have a relationship anymore because you've crossed so many lines, right? But I agree with your your metaphor of the tennis. It's not crossing lines, though. It's I don't like it. I don't. Right. I don't approve of that. Sure. Yeah. 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 Like, th- there's a behavior that you've taken in your life, a posture you've taken in your life, an identity you've taken in your yes. life that takes you so far away from the world I inhabit. Well, simply, if you we weren't related to me, right, we wouldn't have any kind of relationship. So, like in Alcoholics and, or in Al Anon, uh, the, the friends and family group, um, I had a family member that was an alcoholic, and this was something that I had to work through in Al Anon was I did write a letter that that established boundaries mm-hmm. and said, but it was very much Tennessee, like you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Here are the parameters in which I will enjoy a relationship and, and see you. Um, but whenever you step out of these parameters, I will excuse myself. I'm not going to lecture you. I'm not going to condescend you. I'm not going to treat you poorly. Um, but I will be withdrawing and I will be unavailable for relationship mm-hmm. when you leave this this designated zone. And that's it. And, and like, but one of the things they teach us a lot in Al Anon is like, look, the three C's, right? You didn't cause this. You can't control this. You can't yeah, cure no. this. And you got to be really careful not to try to do those things. <laughs> what, what, did, what C did That's he the throw third in C. There? What, what did he throw in there? Oh, yeah. Did, you know what I did. Ah, uh, <laughs> did you, did you go cunt wallet again? Oh, I didn't say wallet. <laughs> oh, oh, good. So I don't know. I, I, I'm with you. I think Mike, you got to teach your dad to play tennis. Jacob, yeah. would you send the letter? Uh, I would. I think this is a little bit in the realm of what we've talked about before. You can be right or you can be happy. Yeah, that's a good point. If you want to have a relationship with your dad, then it might just be up to you to have a relationship with your dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have family members that are uh, much more right wing in in their politics than than I enjoy. Uh, And when they bring it up, I say something along the lines of, Look, we're having a nice time. Let's not fuck it up. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, right. Let's, not, let's yeah. just talk about something else. Right. We don't need to talk about this. Right. We know how each other feels about this, so let's just move on. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of times you're not going to have any kind of new discussion. Right. Like, we don't need it's, to talk about abortion. Yeah. Right. We know, we know where we lie on this, on this topic. Right. Like, unless you have new information for me, yeah. then we don't need to talk about it. Right. Yeah. No, I, I think it, I again. I appreciate. Like, my... I just had a conversation with a fetus who was one week old. Yeah, and a very intelligent conversation. And you really got some notes. Yep. Yeah, I uh, helped they, him they light really, a cigar. They yeah. really liked the ballet. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Then, uh, you know, that's that's new information. Yeah, that's very important. Or like, yeah. oh hi, uh, have you met? Have you met Jesus Christ? Yeah. This is Jesus Christ. <laughs> this guy standing next to me. Uh, this is the actual Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, you might you might have some opinions that you want to change. She's back again. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mike, yes, I, mean, back. I appreciate back again. that Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> call a friend. So, yeah, I mean, I appreciate that this is an order of magnitude different, but I think all three of us seem to be pretty in harmony on this concept that this situation and this ideology has already cost so much. Yeah. And, and maybe it doesn't need to also cost your relationship, whatever's remaining of a relationship that you could have with your father and that maybe you can just define what parameters of relationship you are available for. 
And there's room for that to be authentic and be real, but perhaps much of the landscape has been removed and much of the fellowship has been removed because of these choices. And and I could see that too, you know, like the other examples of like, oh, somebody's in the mob or something. I don't want to be around them. I don't want to be at their home. There's a lot that's happening in their life that's bought and paid for by blood. And, and I don't feel good about being in that environment, but I might send them a letter that says, hey, Uncle Mike, I'm thinking of you. I love you. Merry Christmas. You know, and so maybe there's room well, for that. Well, I mean, that. if he's in the mob, you'd want to stay on his good side. Yeah, I'm not trying to piss him off. Yeah, yeah. Not, you know, he's, he's the godfather. Let's not lecture the guy that's in <laughs> no, the mob. No, no, no. Yeah, uh, d- dear Uncle Mike, s- still not a snitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but just thinking of you warmly and passively. Was yeah. talking to a and cop the other day and reminded me. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Do you, do you feel though? Like I mean, there are some people I think that, um, like I had said before, can kind of like have somebody close in their life and be like, I absolutely fundamentally disagree with this person on this topic, but I still value them as a human being, they're still very important to me. They've got all these other qualities. And then I think there are some instances where there are people that are like, I can't, I just can't overlook this. Right. You know, where it's just like, it's so personal and it's so deep that like, I just can't let this go. Well, it's, you have to decide. It is, do I, do I want to take a stand against this person doing this? Is it worth it this, Whatever. Or do I want to have a relationship with this person? Yeah, yeah, and and I and, just, it, and it may be that you can't do both. I yeah. think that you're going to get a lot more public applause when you say out loud, "I'm taking a stand," but also appreciate how fuck all that public applause actually. Oh, it matters. won't mean anything. It means dick. Yeah, you have yeah. one father, especially at your dad's yeah. funeral. Yeah, yeah, at dad's funeral, nobody gives a shit how many likes your tweet yeah. got or yeah. how many people privately, you know, appreciated your integrity that you said no, I will not associate with that. And like again, Mike, I'm not mocking, I'm not saying that no. you do it for the fans or you do it for the likes, you do it for anybody else's approval, but like that's how little I think of these ideas that are like principles and v- values and virtues. We have to live in this three-dimensional meat space and in that space yeah. you only have so many humans that you have this shared history with and to the extent that you can still have any connection with them. I'm usually a yes vote to find that connection. I, I usually am too, with with the caveat that I I have seen relationships before in the past yeah. with former clients of mine where they have cut off all ties, and right. I think it was a good idea. Yeah, like a you good know, example. Is an sometimes abuser. it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, sometimes that's your abuser. And that You're might like, just should use... I overlook it? And it's like, nope. You need to have a safe space. Like mm-hmm. in this part, yeah. you shouldn't you know abandon that shit. But. You know, and that's why like, I do want to say one last time. I, I think it has to be a case by case basis. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. And I think Mike is kind of hopefully Mike, we've we've given you some things to think Chew about. On, yeah. yeah. And and you're going to have to kind of make your own decision on this. But hopefully, uh, hopefully yeah. we've made a well, little if you want us to you. just decide for you, just write in a follow up note. Yeah, yeah. And we'll just we'll go t- ahead and make the call. We could do We got yeah. a coin. We could. We could do yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You just miss Cleo this shit and just yeah. tell you <laughs> what to do. That's fine. Also, the Why most offensive we thing done that? about the dad is the physics, right? I mean, that's what pissed me off. I didn't give two shits about the Trump thing. Oh, oh okay, here we go. Jacob's got a coin. Oh, uh, punch him. Okay, yeah, there it is. <laughs> punch him right in the neck. Yeah. We didn't really decide what the sides mean, I guess. <laughs> no, nope, we should have talked um, about the sides of the coin before I flip it. Yeah, so I punch him in the neck and yeah. teach him tennis. I yeah. think those are the takeaways. And there don't eat at Chick-fil-A. But without talking to him. I yes. never eat on Ch- Chick-fil-A on a Sunday. I won't do it. And that's a principle. My I'm favorite Chick Fil A's are the ones that are uh, built into the football stadiums. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah better close oh, on Sundays. Also, yeah. <laughs> fuck you, Chick Fil A. I went to an Aviators game and they had a special event where they had like a Chick Fil A kiosk, and uh-huh. everybody was so excited. And it was just the the lamest two pieces yes! of bread with chicken patty. How much was that sandwich? Eighteen dollars. Okay, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? What? I, I said eight. I said eighteen. Eight? Yeah, he is way closer. Really? Yeah, it was like I think of like sixteen dollars yeah. a sandwich. Like wow. just garbage but by the rules of prices right jacob you lose that's right nick um, wins. Uh, i respect it a respectful <laughs> move yep mike good luck on this one and good luck on your tennis lessons we are going to take a quick break why would you choose to teach someone tennis even if you can't communicate with them this doesn't seem I would, like a smart i would choose way. to you know try communication this first. is it's like this hear is no an evil analogy see no that evil everybody no can evil. relate to we've all no. done we've this all don't talk to people that we can't don't communicate why is this guy like throwing you're... a baseball at me on the tennis court he why? doesn't know anything i shouldn't have given him that bucket of different sports balls i listened to pod therapy i should have just given him a tennis ball we're taking a quick break and when we come back we're talking about boba tea and sugar addiction. He's not going to bring a football. You're listening to Pod <laughs> Therapy. 
Today's episode is brought to you by uh, Jake Schneider, Judy Schneider, Leon Kassab, Carolyn Albert, Sammy Scoop, Sarah Smith, Mike Helm, Darren Cunningham, Matt and Lisa Tangerman, and Mrs. Hot Dog Scoop. Would mm. you like to sponsor the show? Of course you would. Hell yeah. Head on over to uh, patreon.com slash therapy and sign up to become a therapist. Only dumbasses don't go to patreon.com slash therapy. <laughs> That's and right. remember to Funko Pop. Hit that $10 level or higher. We'll kick in a raffle ticket for every 10 We divide by 10 That's US right. dollars. Okay. Our trivia this we week. We don't round up. You have to round up. You round up. Uh, trivia this week. Official languages. Oh. Okay. Of people who learn tennis. So I will, uh, <laughs> I will, I'll give you, I'll give you the country. Oh, fuck. And then you have to oh, damn identify it. what the official language oh, Are there any trick questions? Yeah, they're all fucking trick questions because I official will, languages are dumb because of official colonizing. Official languages are dumb. They are because of the colonization thing. Like India, it's like fucking English. It's like, but shouldn't it be Indianese? You know, and it's not. It's it gonna, should be. It's English. You're right. You're right. You're right. Because yeah. of colonizing. It should be yep. Indianese. You know it what? Should be. I don't support your imperialist agenda. We're not fucking talking ever again. We're done here. I'm leaving. Okay. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> that clapping sound is me um, walking away. I don't all know right. how to make clapping. <laughs> I, um, make I thought you were just clapping for yourself. No, no. I'm trying this to is obviously not going to be fair. So I will award uh, to handicap this a little bit. I'm okay. going to award Jim some extra points. As I get we two. Go. I get two for a no. Right? You, I'll, I will give you uh, one tenth of a point. Oh wow! If you're able to correctly identify whether or not it's a real country, uh, so I get a bonus. Yeah, Man, that's a small bonus, dude. Well, I've got twelve questions, so it adds up. I had Ten All of right. them to get one. This is okay. weak. Uh, number one, Antigua and Barbuda. What the fuck? I'll give you two points if you get it on the fly. One what? if you want the multiple choice. This what what did you say? Languages or countries? Those are countries. You have to identify the say official those language. words again. Antigua and Barbuda. Antigua, Antigua. Barbuda. Ooh, I want to. Are do they ya. in the song? No, I don't. Think Antigua so. is a shirt, and Barbados is what you're trying to say. Barbados is another country. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're not off to a great start. All right, say again. Trust me. Barbuda? <laughs> yes. That's not a Antigua. fucking place. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're passing on your one tenth of a uh, point. All right. <laughs> Let's move right on to the languages. Uh, what do you think? Do you want anybody want to go for it on no. the fly? No. Okay. Am I allowed to ask you where they are? Caribbean. Uh, Jamaican. Okay. So you're going to go for the two points. Wait, how does it work? Jesus Christ. There's choices. You can listen to the choices or you can go two for two points. points two no points choices. on the fly, one point oh, for multiple choices. I'm going to wait for options. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm what gonna... an interesting strategy <laughs> for, <laughs> for options. <laughs> From yeah. Jim, okay. is that a real country joke? Here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here I have consulted options. with my attorney. Here are I've been your advised options. to wait. English, Dutch, French, or Portuguese? Oh, Jesus. Those are. The four languages that I was debating between in my head. <laughs> yeah. so I was really not hoping that one of them wouldn't be on yeah. there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. No, Jamaica definitely I'm, is not on there. Uh, also, not a language. So, huh. right. probably don't guess that one in the future. Right. All right. I'll take that off the board. Jamaican be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the, the Jamaica have a bobsled team. I guess it's English. All right. So, I'm going to go with <laughs> Portuguese. Portuguese okay. is a good guess. Yeah. Why are you guessing Portuguese? Uh, because the colonialism. Uh-huh. So the English people went north, and the Spanish people went kind of middle, and the Portuguese people kind of went south. And I don't know where the Caribbean is, but I don't think it's north. Okay. So I'm going to go with... You don't know where the Caribbean is? I don't know. It's in the water. So Portuguese. You know, he so, got you there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm giving him a half a point. For yeah, that. fuck yeah! Okay. In the Early water. lead. Because <laughs> <laughs> Caribbean is in the water. Yes. Uh, okay, but I got 12 questions here. Uh, colonialism ties into almost all of these. I'm going so, hard on my strategy, but that doesn't matter because you still have to yes, understand. You have to understand what presented. You have to understand what countries were colonized by what other. Countries. I have a hot guess. So, okay. I have a solid guess. I'll so guess Dutch. Portuguese. Dutch. It is English. You're both. Yeah. Wrong. God damn it. Okay. This game's hard. Qatar. Is that what that board game's about? Okay, is it or is it not a country first? I know it's a board game. Jacob's always playing it. Okay, so he's going to pass on his I'm always playing play. a board game called Qatar. Settlers of Qatar. <laughs> oh, Catan? that's Settlers of Catan. And why do you think I'm always playing Settlers of Catan? I feel like you told me that you play that game. 
I've I've played it in the past, yeah. There we go. We're in agreement. Why are we fighting? I, I, the always is what threw me off. I'm not going to take a guess on this. Okay, you want the options? Do you want options? I want options. Yeah. English, Arabic. Ooh, there it is. Kurdish. What the fuck is Kurdish? Persian. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. Oh, he felt real comfortable for yep, a second. He did. Oh, good. All right, you go first. I'll take Kurdish. Fuck. Arabic, Kurdish, and Persian. And English. Well, that ain't English. That ain't English. I got news for you. A lot of places speak English. Oh. And also a lot of places have more than one official language. I'm going. I did in ter- intentionally did not pick those countries. Okay. Yes. Oh, so that that's... would suck. All right. It's not going to be English because that just feels insulting uh-huh. to the region. It's going to be Persian. And my logic is that I don't know where this place is, but I think it's near Iran. And I think the Iranians speak Persian. Okay. okay. Well, solid logic. A you're, fine piece of logic. You're wrong. Fuck. Uh, you're both wrong. It God is, damn it, it is Arabic. It's Arabic. And yeah. I'm still yes. in the lead with that half a point for the Caribbean is in the water bit. Yeah. But oh, you, look at you go. I, yeah. I, I may take that away at some point. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Just> so, <All laughs> right. Easy just come, easy really go. It kind of depends it, on my mood. It right could now. be given, it could be <laughs> taken away. <laughs> All right. So we're 0 for okay. 2. 0 for 2. Uh, third one. Uh, not the state in the United States, the country, <laughs> Georgia. Hmm. Um, anybody want to take it on the fly? I want Russian. I was going to say Russian. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to go with that? I'm going. I'll go it. Russian. Give me Russia. Okay. You're wrong. God okay. damn it. Now can we have options? Okay. <laughs> sure. Since we zeroed each other out on that anyway. Uh, Russian, Czech, Romanian, Georgian. Oh, well, there it is. All right. I'll take Georgian. I'll take Czech. It is Georgian. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> worth, one and a half. Worth no points. Um, yeah. What? Okay, last yeah, I mean, one. What's the point of that one? Jesus. Last one for this round. Okay. <laughs> I think you guys will get this one. I was just trying to be uh, you know, difficult with Jim and hope that, hoping that it wasn't Georgian. <laughs> wow. I was hoping okay. there was like some political thing and for some reason it, the official language wasn't Georgian. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. dude, what a cuck country you'd have to be to like have your own na- national language called Georgian and they're like, no, it's officially Russian, bitch. Yeah. And like, God damn it. <laughs> uh, I've, got, I've got bad news about Ireland for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're upset about that, I've got real uh, bad news about Ireland. No. Okay, last one for this round. Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast? That's a country? Or is it a coast? Is that the place the elephants live? No. Mm-hmm. I don't believe uh I could be wrong. I do not believe. Well, I'm not elephants. I'm not guessing. Okay. I I mean, I know where it is. Yeah. Which I think puts me a step above Jim. But I don't know what the official languages in that region are. Well, they have elephants, so it must be in Africa. They might not have elephants. Ivory. Other animals have ivory. What? Hippopotamus, I believe, has Plus, ivory. I, it's the Ivory Coast. What? That doesn't necessarily mean it's elephants. It could just be something about the sand on the water. Oh. Yeah, it's ivory. Right. It doesn't have to be I actual my legitimate ivory. I hope it's elephants. Okay. Uh, English, Dutch, French. Portuguese. God damn it. See, these are always so tricky. You said English, Dutch, French, and what? Portuguese. All right. I'm going to take... Give me... Oh, wait. I picked first last time, so it's your turn. All right. I'll go Dutch. Yeah, I was going to go French. It is French. Ah. Bitch. Oh, I'm so good oh, at shit, this. I knew that. Yeah. Yes. I actually knew that. No yeah. good does yeah, it now. Because you'll, you'll see it... Uh, you'll see the... It labeled different ways. Sometimes yeah. you'll see it in English. It'll say, uh, I Ivory know it Coast. from uh, the World Cup. Yeah. And then sometimes I mean, it's the Olympics. Yeah. You, it'll see, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. 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 Huh. Cool. Oh, well. Yep. Jim's up one and a half to nothing. One and a half to nothing. Woo! I feel like I should get half a point for, uh, hippopotamuses Oop. have ivory. That in isn't teeth. true. That is true. The, I, where they don't have horns in their teeth in their tusks. They're, they have tusks? Elephants also don't have horns. They have tusks. Yeah, but uh, hippos have tusks? Yeah, they have big fucking tusks in their mouth. You know, the Hungry Hungry Hippos game did not accurately represent these animals. Now, I've often said that uh, the Hungry Hungry Hippos game did not educate people enough about hippopotamuses. No. Yeah. Wow, look at yeah, those. They've got, they've got fucking big old Ooh, tusks. Ooh, those things will fuck you up. Oh, yeah. Good Lord. Hippos will, the hippos will kill you quick. Jesus. They are not as friendly hippos as I will, thought. Hippos will murder you. They don't even look like they eat marbles. Boba tea. They eat whatever the fuck they and want. sugar addiction. <laughs> yeah. Hi, guys. This may seem silly, but this is serious, and I'm not joking about this. Basically, I'm 
addicted to sugar. And it has gotten worse, especially with bubble teas. At first, it was okay. Have one once a week, then two, then three. And before you know it, it's seven days of bubble tea. I looked at my bank account. Same thing happened with people with the, like the Frappuccinos at Starbucks. That was another big thing with us. Oh man, those are still good. I looked at my bank account, how much I've spent, and it's $300 a month. That's a bill. It's that bad. That's a car payment. That is a payment. I've tried to quit, but that's like electricity and water back. Yeah. Yeah, That's a utility. I do have anxiety, depression, cable, OCD. Yeah, that would be a, well, yeah, full speed internet. (laughs) I do have anxiety, depression, OCD, and emotional dysregulation. So when I feel anxious or emotionally upset, I go to bubble teas. I ended up Googling bubble tea addiction and realized it's an actual thing and found a Reddit page of someone speaking their concerns of their bubble tea habit. It led me down to a rabbit hole to an article of a study from to Shigua University and Central University of Finance and Economics in China about addiction to sweet beverage as a link to depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts related to bubble teas. It sounds crazy, I know, but hear me out. I've experienced emotional mood swings and intrusive suicidal thoughts since having bubble tea every day. I know there may be other factors at play, and I'm seeing a therapist and dealing with DBT skills, which have improved the past week. However, I'm wondering, could this be an actual thing? Bubble teas and sugar leading to depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts or ideations. And most importantly, how do I quit having bubble teas and not be addicted to sugar? Switch to whiskey. I'll leave, <laughs> I'll leave a link to the article Start if smoking. you're interested in reading it. Thanks. Uh, P.S. Keep doing the tremendous work that you are from Anonymous, living in Middle Earth, a.k.a. New Zealand. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I like it. After consuming sugar-containing food, the sugar rush can make you feel good and happy. Studies showed that when you eat sugar, such as the sugar found in boba tea, the brain will release endorphins such as dopamine, the feel-good hormone, and make you feel satisfied and signal you to quickly finish up this cup of bo- bubble tea. It's, it passes the smell test yeah. 100%. I, I mean, mean, it's a lot of sugar. Uh, well, the argument that are humans addicted to sugar, that is settled. Like, to yeah. me, that's not even a question. It's not. Look at our society. I mean, our society's dying from sugar intake. Sure, anecdotally, yes. But if you want to know what the research says, it's not quite as, as bad conclusive. As we think. Well, okay. it's not as conclusive. Okay. There's a lot there's there's a lot more to it than yes, because I could say that just from personal experience. Right. Like I get this with like Duncan. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, oh yeah. I got Duncan across the street from just my house. Pure oh, that's scoop. dangerous. Yeah. Just and pure scoops of sugar. Yeah. Exactly. And and I mean there go there's times where like I will have that every day. Yeah. For multiple weeks at a time. Oh yeah. And then I'm like, holy shit, I gotta stop. Yeah. yeah. And then those first few days, it's tough. You feel it. Yeah. Like it's and you're you're thinking about it. Jones. Crazy. My rule with like donuts, because I will I will house some fucking donuts. Oh hell yeah. yeah. And so my rule with donuts is I don't buy donuts. Yeah. If somebody else brings donuts then i'll have a donut but you and the fact that they that somebody else brought them you know for a group of people means that i won't eat all the donuts yeah i'm just like civility yeah 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 because right. they're they're in the lobby for everybody yeah. but if i go to krispy kreme and oh. buy a dozen just glazed krispy kreme donuts oh, no. i can eat a dozen glazed krispy kreme donuts without blinking i believe and then that is lunch. one serving of yeah. krispy kreme donuts yeah. is one dozen krispy kreme plain speaking donuts. of servings a medium size that is a 500 milliliter bubble tea with pearls and the full amount of sugar has approximately eight teaspoons of sugar in it, Ooh. which is 335 calories of just sugar. Ooh. The 700 milliliter, which uh, which they're calling the large on um, whatever menu this is, big ass drink. has uh, 11 teaspoons of sugar, oh which is almost 470 God. calories of pure sugar. Oh which shit. that's a lot of sugar. It's it, lot which of comes sugar. out to I want to say anywhere from like 36 to 60 grams Damn. of sugar. So in comparison, like a, a, it, it's close to a Mountain Dew. So like Mountain Dew is like 77. Like grams. that's about how much okay. sugar I put into uh, my my pitcher that mm-hmm. I was talking about in the For pre-show. A big ass pitcher of tea for a gallon pitcher of sweet tea Mm -hmm. i I put about 11 and that's one cup like 11 teaspoons of of sugar the thing is is like 60 grams of sugar means nothing 
to most people. Okay. Well, that's you why I like teaspoons. Yeah, because you don't see it. Yeah, yeah. I have no but idea. Like, what if a gram you is. actually, if you actually take like the cubes of sugar, yeah, and you put sixty grams of sugar, yeah, it's like the size of the can itself. Is a gram a sugar cube? I'm not sure. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. But the teaspoon yeah. thing was it teaspoons or tablespoons? Teaspoons. teaspoons. That's a fuck ton of sugar still. It's still. Like, yeah. Yeah. Still I mean, you, you tell me to scoop eight of those bad boys into a bowl. That's an ass load of sugar, man. Yeah. So, so we agree that it's addictive. Yeah. Uh, addictive. Okay. Uh, here's, here's, here's where you're getting okay. stuck. You're using the scientific word yes. addictive. Yes. 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 Yeah. And, and this is habit where it, forming. Absolutely. Yeah. And at the end of the day. Most sugar cubes are about three grams. Okay. Ooh, damn. At the end of the day, it's problematic. Yeah. So the language is not quite as important to the general public. Sure. Yeah. Okay. It's important to researchers. Right. Because we have to understand what these terms mean so we know how to research it. Yeah. Because if you don't have a clear definition of what's happening, right. then you can't have a good analysis of your data. Right. Right. For sure. You can't say that this data applies, this does not, because we don't have any way of distinguishing. We need to define right? terms. Yeah. So like now on the surface, food addiction seems very plausible. Sure. Okay. Because we've got kind of the the brain pathways evolve to respond to rewards, you know, as activated by, you know, addictive drugs or things like that. Uh, sugar is a noteworthy as a substitute or a, a substance that releases opiates, uh, opioids, or I'm sorry, responds to like the opioid receptors. Okay. It releases dopamine. Like it has all of those same qualities yeah. and characteristics. The mechanism of action seems yes. there. It, yeah. it's, it's, it, it is very similar. And so we, yeah. we would expect that we're going to see a lot of the same behaviors and mm. you do see a lot of the same behaviors. So you do see, um, you know, the, the physical signs as far as like tolerance. Okay. You do see craving. cravings. You do see even withdrawal, withdrawal. symptoms. Well, anything yeah. that yeah. releases so sugar crash. dopamine, yeah. you're going to have all of that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, By the so, way, 11 teaspoons of sugar translates into 46 grams of sugar, which translates into 53, or sorry, 15 and change uh, sugar cubes. Okay. So it's 15 go. sugar cubes per large bo- bubble tea. Yeah. Have you guys ever had a bubble tea? I've not. Yeah, I don't care for them. I've never had them. I've not. I've not There's them. a machine at UNLV that makes you bubble tea. It's a robot. And That's a I person. Like it, it turns her name you is Susan. into bubble yeah. tea. It yeah. makes you bubble tea. It turns you into bubble tea. That's it's a cool. homicidal robot. It forces you into bubble tea. Yeah, and, and it, it holds even... you down in a barrel of bubble tea. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Until you become one. Yeah. You had a real tapioca look about you today. Yeah. Is that what those balls are? I don't know. The pearls? Is I think they're Rocky Mountain Oysters. Mm. <laughs> Set the record. Even yeah. Those. That's that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. So I actually, I, I dug into this a little bit. Um, here's, here's the interesting thing about like a lot of the research and stuff is that a lot of the research on sugar addiction um, has been conducted with rats. Okay. Okay. So... Now, translating that as far as those rats are junkies, bro. They get addicted to everything. <laughs> from a biological perspective, it makes sense because yeah. rats are actually genetically very similar to to human beings, so we see a lot of the common similarities. But obviously, humans experience cultural and social, environmental uh, factors sure. really that impact and and make and, and add complexity. Right. right? So. What they were doing uh, with some of the research that I was looking at, they would have like, uh, I'm not going to go into the whole uh, method here of how they did this, but basically with these rats, they were able to see binging. They were able to see withdrawal behaviors in the Mm. rats. Um, Yeah, so loss of control that was present. Yeah, Um, but a lot of this also they they kind of had to look at the a couple of flaws in yeah. some of the research and why they they start they stop short of saying addiction to sugar. Okay. Number one, because addiction isn't a term that we use. Yeah. Anymore. Right, right. It's yeah. dependence. Dependence. And okay. because addiction has kind of the, the the definition has evolved beyond what we really identify as like diagnostic criteria. Right. Right. So we've got not just physical dependence, but then we have um, psychological dependence as well. Right. Right. And so we're also, we're not just looking at how the body reacts, but we're also looking at behaviors. Right. And how the change in behaviors. And that's how we see that reward seeking behavior and like, 
Yeah, like at a How minimum, it, the mechanism of taking in food could at least be classified as like a process. Sure. Similar and it's, to addiction. It, yeah. Very similar, but also there's a couple really important distinctions where it does make it difficult to really look at it because like addiction to alcohol, we see how that affects social functioning at work, right? how it affects relationships, how it affects legal issues with DUIs. Right. right. We don't see that with food, right? Yeah. So you don't get that same kind of... Yeah, uh, worst case measure. scenario, yeah. you're snacking yeah. at your desk. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You're eating and a so Snicker bar at your desk. You're not going to get arrested for eating a Snickers bar while driving. Right. American right. Heart Association, by the way, uh, recommends uh, for men, for, for people who are born male... Uh, no more than 36 grams of sugar per day. Oh. Uh, if you remember correctly, the uh, the uh, 46 was the amount of sugar in the large so one bubble tea. Bubble so, tea is... so one large bubble tea is already 10 grams of sugar more than the American Heart Association recommends. Damn. And for people who are born women, uh, that number is lower. Mm-hmm. Uh, they recommend no more than 25 grams of sugar per day. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely an unhealthy habit. Yeah. So one last yeah. thing I'm going to touch on with kind of the research with the rats is... Yes, they were able to demonstrate that um, rats, when they are deprived of the food and then given the opportunity to choose, are going to choose the food with the higher sure. sugar content. Yeah, but they don't. They they can't really say for sure yet. Is that because of sweetness or palatability? Okay. So they really need more research looking at other ways of making the food more palatable that don't include increases in sweetness. I recommend so, cilantro. <laughs> so, I mean, they were talking about like, but like high, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. like high fat palatability. Okay. Right. So if you do that and you see the same behavior in those rats, right. then that tells us, oh, the, this, what we're seeing in this behavior is not necessarily due to the sugar content. Right. It's the palate. We made the food more palatable. Okay. Right. So there's all these different things that have to really be looked at. And so I, on the surface, I would definitely agree with you, writer. Yes, this is obviously a problem. You've identified it as a problem. You are You know it's a problem. You are experiencing yeah. $300 the dollars a month so. problem. Yeah. Yes. Um and it's not and, healthy. And, and so Maybe. yeah, and so I would just me personally would stop just short of saying addiction because we don't quite really know that yet. Sure. But I where do you go from here? Right. What are some strategies? Also like if you're take? predisposed to diabetes, uh, yeah. it's like all kinds of you things. Need to, you need to dial it down. Yeah. And the yeah. writer knows that. But yeah. you've got a one boba a day habit. You, you might know as well that you're doing it. it. You're dependent on sugar. <laughs> yeah. You're addicted to boba. But here's the really tough thing is dependent. like no, sorry. I remember we did <laughs> the rat thing. Yeah. A few years ago, we did like a sober October thing. Yeah. And I think you stopped. We did? You gave. I you did. did not. <laughs> you, did not. Uh, you you gave up alcohol. I think. Yeah. And I gave up sugar. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember. That. Oh okay. yeah. I do remember this. Yeah. Number one, that I gave up black tar heroin. Sucked. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob gave up hunting men for sport. Which, yeah. by the way, <laughs> kick the habit. Have yeah, it. yeah. Have good. back. Good. Yeah, but he could relapse at any moment. <laughs> but I, I had to be very clear with like it's the most dangerous game <laughs> with the parameters of what I was doing that month because you can't just eliminate sugar. Yeah, like right. I mean, as far as it's like glucose, yeah, right, right, it, it's everywhere. Yeah, you can't eat like, fruit. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's something your your body needs it. Sure. Like, it is the main fuel for your brain. Sure, yeah. So yeah. it's like you can't just cut it out. On the other hand, I knew a woman, uh, a dancer here in Vegas, uh, that was a fruititarian. Ooh, oh. only ate fruit, and it turns out that's not good either. No, it's yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't yeah. sound like. Turns a good out idea. there's uh, a yeah. yeah. She couldn't figure out why she couldn't drop weight. No. And oh, then, like a, a dietitian sugar. was like, "You're eating sugar. You're just yeah. eating sugar every yeah, day. That's all you're eating." Sugar. Yeah. She was eating like grapefruit and shit all day long. Diet. Yeah. I never heard of a fruitarian before. I, uh, that's the only one that I've heard of. So, uh, I think what I ended up doing is like uh, I kind of said no added sugar. Thank you. Right. Like in a, a regular diet, yes, but I'm not going to have candy bars. I'm yeah. not going to have soda and all that stuff. Well, you could have a Snicker bar as long as you didn't add sugar to it. 
Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. As long as you didn't do your regular, you know, a couple of tablespoons of sugar on top yeah, of the Snicker bar, exactly. then it's fine. Yeah. Well, and, and I could have a teaspoon of sugar as long as I didn't have yeah. more sugar on right. top of. You that. don't want to add sugar yeah. to your <laughs> teaspoon of sugar. Well, that's yeah. just ridiculous. Exactly. Yeah. You add boba to the sugar. That's, you got to get the little balls. But you know, there are some things. Here, here's this tea what, has balls. <laughs> here's what I would recommend, Ryder. I would recommend, even if you feel like maybe you are not addicted to it the best way to tell is to cut it out mm. and see yeah. how your body reacts to it. Okay. How you react to it physiologically and how you react to it psychologically. Right. Okay. So when you eliminate something, if you're dependent, that's what that means. Yeah. There's going to be a reaction to it, right? You're going right. to have intense cravings. Your body may like, you're going to have some maybe headaches or that, things like that. You know, some mm, physiological things that are going to happen. Your teeth will get healthier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Those rats will stop I following would, you around. Yeah. I would recommend. They're not all negative side effects. <laughs> <laughs> I would recommend just doing a detox. Yeah. You know, just, just commit to, you know, start with seven days, completely cut it out mm. and just treat it as kind of a science experiment. See what happens. Um, it's probably going to suck. Oh yeah. Uh, but I think once you kind of get through those first 10 days, then I think you can kind of start looking at what are some alternatives? Yeah. Because that's the the big thing for me is Uh I used to drink, I mean, man, I used to drink like eight cans of Mountain Dew a day. Yeah. Like really, I was, I love Mountain Dew. His hair still has a yellowish tinge to it. Yeah. 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 That's That's right. That's just, it's it's just in him now. That's just, yeah. (laughs) Do the do. Yeah. He's part do. <laughs> yeah, my sweat to this day just tastes Lime like green. Do. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you kind of have to find people in trailer park still lit naked. Yeah. Sweats. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a salt rock <laughs> for <Yeah>. hillbillies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so finding alternatives, like, uh, and there are things that like you can't go from. For me, like I couldn't go just from like soda to drinking flavored water, sparkling right. water. Because that was just too, too sharp of a too decline. Different. Yeah, yeah. I so, was thinking like smoothies. Well, actually, my plan. I think what would actually do what would do you better instead of trying to dial it down, mm-hmm. detox completely, and then you can go to something like carbonated water or flavored water. Okay. When you say detox okay. completely, go for how long? I would so say water only. Water is the only commit, thing you're drinking for yeah, how many days? Commit to a week. Okay. Um, if but you can go to do to in the writer's defense, what their, their question is, Hey, I can't stop this. How do I stop this? And our answer can't just be, you should stop this and then discover from stopping this, how that feels. Yeah. We have to teach them how to stop. Sure. Hold on. I'll flip yeah. a coin. I also wasn't done talking. We should punch them All in right. the neck. All right. <laughs> Just sounds I flipped like the coin, but like we're gonna punch this writer. That's in the where day. the harm reduction of like let's switch to smoothies. Maybe okay. that's the step ladder down. From... Possibly, but what what's what's the danger of that? Replacing it, not even replacing it, but losing control of that. Right. Okay. Okay. That's why you don't go from like I'm going to use a, a little bit of meth and then I'm going to dial back and I'm just going to just use a little bit less meth. Okay. That doesn't work. That's the same argument that you just gave me about. Well, you can't just say just to quit it. Right. Well, if they could control it, yeah, then they would be they wouldn't be a problem. So my meth so microdosing is bad. <laughs> yeah. So if you <laughs> dial it down and you're able to control it at a lower level. Guess what? That's great news because it means you don't have a problem. Okay. Well, the good thing about just quitting right. it and going to, to say like, I'm going to be water only for the next seven days is it identifies whether or not there is a physical dependency there. Right. Like you, you are you, over seven days. You will definitely identify if there is a physical issue as well as just the, the financial issue and the, and the you know, long-term health issue of eating a fuck ton of sugar every day. I think the strategy to cutting this out, number one, is getting people involved. Okay. So who do you have that's always around you? Who yeah. do you have that's supportive? Like if you have a spouse or a partner or yep. a roommate, the boba exactly. team manager. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Actually, that's not bad. I mean, no. honestly, that's no, well, probably. Here's what you, do. you call the boba tea place and be like, D- uh, don't serve me for a oh, week. I'll do you one better. Steal from them. Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> That'll okay. get you kicked get out. Caught. <laughs> get your picture taken. No. I was going to say, if this was 95, you could just write them a bad no. check. Yeah, they're, exactly. Like, they're giving Anonymous more, more than one shot. Anonymous <laughs> is putting kids through college at boba. All right. Yeah. 300 a month. Yeah. 
There's kids driving because of Boba. Uh. So, I mean, get somebody who's on board, get support with you. That's going to be the number one thing. Um, and then also come up with a plan of like, how do you want them to confront you? Mm. Uh, you know, punch in the uh, neck. Mm-hmm. But, but be able to kind of, if you're having these feelings that you, that you want to buy a, a, a Boba tea or bubble tea, that you've got somebody that you can talk to that's going to be like, okay, hey, let's let's do something else. The other if that thing sounds like is, a sponsor. It's because it is yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I, I think the other thing that would be really important to do is understanding you don't have to delay a craving for hours. Mm-hmm. You really just have to delay it for like thirty seconds. Right. Okay. And so if you can find some sort of way of distracting yourself for thirty seconds, Isn't getting your like, mind I involved. It was minutes. In that was like fifteen minutes or something. Uh, it's even less than that. Okay. So from from what I, I, I guess I don't have that number right off the top of my head, but it's not. Anything. It's surmountable. It, yeah, it's easily yeah. surmountable. Yeah. It's 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 a just, reasonable amount of time. Yeah, you just have to be able to find some way of engaging your mind and switching, yeah, you know, flipping the switch mm. from you're focusing on this to focusing on something else, and it's just a short amount of time. And then anything after that, it just kind of fizzles away, mm-hmm. right? And it's really just your brain. It's not like you really need it. It's just your brain saying, hey, uh, you know, it's it's 8 a.m. This is our time. It's Boba clock. Always, yeah, yeah, this is what we're doing. It's always Boba 30 somewhere. Yeah, so yeah. your body, it learns these shortcuts to kind of prepare itself for what's going to happen. Right. So you've trained your body to prepare for this tea every day at this time. Right. Right. So now when it's not there, your body's prepared for it and That's it's not it's not happening. Right. Right? right. So you just need to delay it for a short period of time. So find some activities that are going to be engaging your mind, not something that's just like watching TV, mm. because that's not engaging your mind necessarily, unless you're really into the show. You know, but like I've always enjoyed things like music. If you're into music, if you play an instrument, mm-hmm. grab that instrument, play it. Do something that is going to get your attention, that you're going to have to focus your mind on. Uh, get support. I think those are going to be the two big ones. And then just, again, like you don't have to commit to this for the rest of your life. Just commit to it for seven days. Right. See how you feel after that. And that would definitely break, I think, the connection to it so that you can kind of get away from that habit Mm -hmm. and get some space. If you're anything like me, like I'm a very habit-driven person. Uh, like if I if I develop a habit, it's very difficult for me to to break out of that habit. He is so habit driven. He lives in like these little caves on these hills and runs rings to Mordor. I mean, it's it's a lot. Jacob or the writer? Oh, I Jacob. think Jim is uh, thinking of hobbits. Oh yeah, that that one. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I get that. yeah. Say it one more time so I can laugh in real yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I feel like I laughed enough at it. Yeah. <laughs> Gave it exactly one hundred percent of what it was owed. <laughs> Uh, so, but yeah, no, I'm I'm very habit driven. Yeah. So, like for instance, if the if the bubble tea place is on your way to work, you got to take a different way to work. That's what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Like yeah. you got to you got to you got to actively yep. change what you're doing. You and, have to actively change that routine yes, every day. Yes. So, like, well, I'm not even going to drive down that street for the first couple of days. So right. what? So what Jacob is actually referring to is being able to identify triggers. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Interference behaviors so, are huge. Yeah. So, so look you, at that. It's a trigger. See, yeah. I just identified a trigger. There you go. <laughs> Pow. You have to be able to identify, and there are all sorts of different triggers. There are emotional triggers, which it mm-hmm. sounds like you mm-hmm. definitely relate to. Yep. Um, so you need to figure out kind of what are those emotional triggers that, uh, that situational, like yeah. driving mm-hmm. home. Yep. Situational. There are trigger so, fish, which is a type of fish, mm-hmm. which is probably not related to this. <laughs> yeah. But important. Yep. You, you want to identify them. You want to yes. know. Um, go through all of your senses. Yeah. When when you think about um, bubble tea, what do you smell? Mm-hmm. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? Yeah. And that fifth one. What time of day? Do taste. You, yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. Ah. What, what situations? On this show, we don't have much taste. Things. Yeah. Because that might be a thing, too, because I'm sure that there's friends that are like, oh, sure. we, we should meet up for a bubble tea. And, like, that's how you socialize. Right? Oh, yeah, you have so to punch those friends in the neck. That's a trigger, mm-hmm. too. So, absolutely. And I really like the idea of interference behaviors. That would be one thing I'd throw on the pile of advice is just anything you can do that inhibits the ease with which you get your boba tea. So, like Jacob said, if there's one specific shop it's taking a different route that just does not put you in proximity to that yep. shop. If you can freeze your bank card and and like shut that down, 
during the hours that you would normally travel so that at least it would be hard. Like you have to get out the app and log back in, at least putting a few steps between you and, and being able to make an easy purchase. Can you call your bank and say like, I'm not allowed to spend money at like Target? I don't know, but it feels like you could. I mean, they seem to have these these tools yeah. that are like really specific. If they don't, that should be a thing. That should be a thing. But anything you can do to just inhibit how quickly it can happen. That would be huge. Even I talked if, about my friend on the show who who had to move out of out of Vegas, right? Because yeah. he he spent too oh, much yeah, money, yeah. like he yeah, put himself much. into bankruptcy. Yeah, uh, on uh, brothels, on, yeah. On, on legal prostitution. Yeah, and like, yeah, that would have been a great solution for him yeah, if he could have like called his bank and been like, at "Brothels are us. nothing in Pahrump. I can't yeah. spend money in Pahrump. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lock me out." There's always ways around it. Then you go to a gas station right. and you're like, I'm going to buy f- you go to $15 a gas station dollars worth of gas. Can yeah. I get, get $15,000 <laughs> in change? <laughs> you might have to go to a couple of gas yeah. stations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'd take you might a have while. to hit up a couple yeah. of 7-Elevens for that. <laughs> but I've seen people do that where they might shut off their card and give themselves a cash allowance for the week. Right? Yeah. And they'll say, okay, I have $50. This will not buy me. Oh, that's true. You could just like the amount of money that I want. Carry your card. Right. And when I'm out of money, I'm out of money. So now they're like, Ooh, well, I kind of want lunch today, and like, it, but they can run out of money, right? And then again, is it possible for them to get money? Yeah, they live in a country; they can go get money. But it's about creating the inconvenience, so that like what Nick said, when the craving hits, and you're like, I'm, I've got to go get my boba right now. You're creating some steps that you have to to go through in order to get to that boba, and that might give your brain a fighting chance that the craving could pass. And, and an alternative could be found, or you could lose interest in it if you could just find a way to slow that down. I always use the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of approach. Yeah. Where it's almost kind of like in your head, if you can imagine there's two different personalities. There's you, and there's your addiction. The Hobbit. And as long as you are driving the car, you're fine. Right. But where people fuck up all the time in recovery is they assume that they're always going to be driving the car. Right. So they create their recovery plan based off of that idea that they're always going to be in charge. Yeah. And inevitably they always relapse because what they don't account for are those times when their addiction is driving the car. Right. And And the hobbits cannot see over the dashboard. Exactly. That's very true. So what you need to do, and I think kind of what, what Jim's pointing to here is, don't build your strategy on you always being in control. Yeah, you have right. to build your strategy around the idea that you are not always going to be in control. Yes. At some point, your addiction is going to be driving the car, so you need to create roadblocks. Right. So even if your addiction does take control, it can't go anywhere. Right. There's nowhere for it to leave. Yeah. I had a, uh, a patient in the last few years dealing with alcoholism, and we discovered, as we were trying to think up ways to kind of interfere... We discovered that this person could not eat food and then drink alcohol. It made them violently ill. Huh. And because I, as I was kind of doing the, the the sort of breakdown and trying to understand all their drinking behaviors and habits, I was trying to figure out where they drink and what are their patterns. And I was like, so will you like get drunk at night and then like go gorge food? And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Um, I cannot eat and have alcohol within like five hours of each other. So if I'm going to drink... I can only drink that night and I can sleep. And then the following day I can wake up and I can ingest food. Otherwise I get violently ill. That's, I've never heard of that before. Very unusual trait. But boy, did we exploit that shit for sure. sobriety. Yeah. Because sure. it was like, I'm going to a party with friends. What should I do? And I was like, have, have dinner. dinner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, oh. And it was like, I'm going to an airport. I usually get, you know, wrecked at airports when I'm waiting for my plane. What should I do? It's like, yeah, first thing you do is make yourself breakfast before you leave for the airport. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it turned out this person really liked cooking and was a hobby they wanted to explore more of and found gourmet cook. Great. Fill up. And mm-hmm. then just the Jekyll and Hyde thing. Because when you get to the airport... Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde might come out. Because the habit is you're good. walk over to the bar. He will not yeah. he, he will not drink and get violently ill. That is enough of a deterrent. Mm-hmm. So I, I love that strategy. I love the interference behaviors. I love the idea of, you know, replacement when possible. I love the idea of a detox. Um, all of these I think you could implement. And you know, the support is vital, what Nick said. You you can't do it alone. I think getting an accountability partner, and if you can tell them, like, hey, check on me during my drive home from work. That's when I do this. Get on the phone with me. Ask me where I'm at. You know, can you just talk to me a couple days a week and mean the world? Little things like that. Mm -hmm. But honestly, when you're dropping $300 a month on this habit, 
that is also a resource too, because if you can reapportion that money into something else that would help break the habit, that's worth it. Mm-hmm. You know, like so, cigarettes or the brothel <laughs> is where I was going to go. Yeah. yeah, I think brothels and cigarettes. You know, so if you're smoking on the drive home, you're like cigarettes and boba don't go together. No, that's no. gross. So you makes be fine. the boba taste bad. Yeah, it makes the boba taste bad. So that I think that would be a good. Yeah, one. so start smoking. Yeah. Keep us updated. That's a really good one. We are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about when to expect an apology. You're listening to <laughs> Pod Therapy. Today's episode is brought to you by Juke, Jake Juke. Juke Schneider. Jake, Jake Schneider. <laughs> Judy Schneider. I was trying to combine those together. Leon Kassab, Jukey. Carolyn Albert, Sammy Scoop, Sarah Smith, Mike Helm, Darren Cunningham, Matt and Lisa Tangeman, and Mrs. Hot Dog Scoop. And if you would like to sponsor the show, go to patreon.com slash therapy and sign up to become a therapy producer. You will be entered into a raffle to win our Funko Pops for every $10 of giving you do in the month of May. The Funko Pops are really cool. They are fucking awesome. Yeah. They are super cute. We may just decide not to give them away. So yeah. I don't know. We'll just we'll take see. your money. Yeah. Fuck your couch. Uh, okay, here we go. Belize. I want to jump on it. I Beliv, want Belaf Belize. <laughs> <laughs> Beloved. First off, do you know where it is? No. I'm going to go with good. Spanish. We're off to a great start. Good. I want Spanish. Okay. Yeah, it feels I want Jim Spanish-y. to have Spanish. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. I'm waiting on the options. Oh, you go for okay. it. I'm going for two. Good. English. Uh-huh. Spanish. Yes. Dutch. French. I feel good about my Spanish. I'm just going to guess Dutch. I'm going to keep guessing Dutch until it's right. <laughs> it's going to show up. Yeah. Solid strategy. Those Dutch, they, they, they colonized some shit. The Dutch were they out did. there. They uh, had those ships. You're both wrong. Fuck. English. English. Yeah. Really? Belize is next to Guatemala Belize and south Navidad. of Mexico. Really? But its primary language is English. That's it's official language. Feels wrong. Yeah. They should be embarrassed. Uh, Liechtenstein. Oh, German. <laughs> Give me two. Um, all right, I'll go for two as well. I'll go Austrian. Ooh. Mm. Oh, solid gas. That's upsetting. Oh. Oh, I did not know those were things. <laughs> oh, oh, do you no. want to change? Do you no, wanna, I'm sticking do you to German. The, uh, but I just the did options? not appreciate that that can that be Austrian different. exists. Mm. Uh, sa- yes, it is German. Fuck yeah! Hey! Right. Drop in two! Woo! Okay. Three and a half to zip. I know it was German. Oh, he's got one. Oh, three you and a half to one. Good. That half's going to bail me. Uh, okay. Angola. What the fuck? Where's Angola? It's north of Namibia. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, there's a good. state prison in Louisiana just, uh, called Angola. Just, oh. just south of uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Again, and, none uh, of this is fucking helping me. And west of. Wait, did you say Zambia? Congo? Congo's the movie with the white monkeys. Yes. So what language did they speak in that movie? Sign language. The monkeys didn't talk very much. Yeah, no, they did. You're right. American (laughs) Sign Language. Final Final answer. answer. (laughs) That's a solid Uh, move. I'm going to wait for options. Uh, Yeah, what I think of when I think of Angola is the state, we called it the farm in Louisiana, and they would have, uh, like, Kind of like First Friday type thing. Oh, okay. Where they would ha- they would like make crafts and stuff. Yeah. In prison, and they would they would sell oh, crafts and everything. They'd have okay. days where they would sell crafts. They would also have a prison rodeo. Oh, yes, I heard of that. You That's could go. You cool. could go watch uh, uh, the prisoners like ride bucking broncos. That is a great way to let the prisoners have something. Yeah, I think that's great. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, I don't think a great place. Yeah. It also. Uh, I think there. I think there were also issues. Yeah. Well, it but, sounds, uh, but having like rehabilitation it, yeah. things to do, uh, was I think it, in general, it wasn't was a good idea. Finger painting. Yeah. <laughs> well, it kind of sounds one step away from gladiator fights. <laughs> right. Like, hey, you could sit here and rot in the cell, or go fight a bull, or you could drive this car and shoot guns at other cars. <laughs> yeah. Death race. Uh, okay. Do uh. uh, you want options? I, I want options. Yeah, I think I do. Okay. English, French, Portuguese. Italian. All right, I'll go French. I was going to say Fuck, French. It's going it to be French. It's going to be French. I'm getting. I'm going to take French too. I'm not letting him get one. No, fuck you. You got to. I'm taking something different from you every other time. Yeah, that's true. All right. Uh, let me. Did you say Dutch? No. Now, if he had said Dutch, I would have gone Dutch. Because I, <laughs> <laughs> I love to snag Dutch. Uh, English, French, Italian, and what? Portuguese. 
Yeah, fucking give me Portuguese. I, I feel like I get taste on that. God damn, Portuguese. Portuguese. Oh, yeah. motherfucker. Dropping another bucket. Mm, four okay. and a half to one. All right, God last one. Damn, uh, I'm good at trivia. Last one for this round. Man, I do not know languages. <laughs> you, sir, are an embarrassment. <laughs> I mean, neither does well, Jim. Well, this is, this is the You're thing. You're from Louisiana. Again, we barely expect English. Like, you have to, you, you kind of have to know, like, which country colonized these areas right. to understand. That's it. Like, yep. <laughs> it helps that I don't also, have a clue. Louisiana, yeah. like, I grew up having French classes every day. Yeah. yeah. Like, true. in elementary school, we had to take French every day. Were you got colonized by the French? Louisiana, uh, Louisiana is named after uh, the French king, Louis. Louis. Louis huh. Sienna. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That checks out. Yeah. What did you uh what'd y'all have for breakfast every morning? Croissant. Oh. <laughs> we would enjoy just, our croissant. It's just defensive. Oh. <laughs> it's just hurtful. All right, last one. Republic of the Congo. What you just did that one. Nope. I did Angola. Which is near Republic of the Congo, which uh, as we've already discussed is the language, language ASL. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna all right, I'm gonna take a shot on this one. Okay. I'm going to go Afrikaans. Okay. Boom. Okay. You didn't know I knew that shit. Do you want to hear the options? <laughs> I do. Want... Okay. Options are English, uh-huh. Come on. French, Come on, be uh-huh. there. Spanish, Fuck, be there. There. or Portuguese. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um, the Republic of Congo, English. It's French. Shit. Ah, damn All you right. Afrikaans. If only Dutch had been on there. You yeah, failed I know. me. Wow. All right. I got four more for after the show. Wow. The answer to all those four is click language. Yes. <laughs> Morse code. When to expect an apology. Hello, all. Long Don't. time lurker. First time sender. First off, I love the show and all the great things you four do for mental health. Your quick Thank you. <laughs> pew, pew, <laughs> pew. pew. <laughs> Your quick witted humor, professional insight, and genuineness is needed. Yeah, but what about the rest of them? Yeah, what about <laughs> Happy, What Snoopy, about Nick, Jim, and Whitney? Dopey, and Doc. Oh, yeah, yeah, what about all those things? To start, I want to preface by saying that I'm in love with my life, and I'm incredibly lucky to get to say that. I have a beautiful partner. We've been together for two years now, and we have a beautiful daughter together with another on the way. On to the reason why I'm writing. I'm uh, In my 30 years of life experience, I find that I'm more sensitive compared to most men, and I'm definitely the more sensitive one in my relationship. I find myself sometimes struggling in my relationship because I'll try my best to quickly apologize for my wrongdoing and expect the same in return. And yes, I know expectations only lead to disappointment. However, it's rare that I do receive any apology. And when I rarely do, it's only because I bring up how I feel I've been wronged. I basically have to search it out. I feel annoying for feeling like I need it and just want to know, do I need to develop thicker skin and just get the fuck over it or continue sharing how I feel when I feel wronged? It's draining feeling like I'll give so quickly but need to pull teeth when I need a little loving. Do I let the little things go, like if she snaps at me? Do I pick and choose my battles? That old saying, a happy wife is a happy life. Do I just adopt that motto? It feels wrong to accept any disrespect, and I don't want to let things slide, leading to resentment. I've tried explaining my need many times over the two years, but it seems like I shouldn't expect any change from her. It's making me feel like it's me who needs to change. I've struggled with this for years now and just need some guidance. All the love for you guys. And yes, I agree. Some whiskey company would be smart to sponsor the show. Damn it. Cheers. Anonymous. Agreed. Come on, whiskey. Nevada bourbon. You know, Smokehouse Bourbon. God, Smoke damn. Wagon. Smoke Wagon. Yeah. I wrote to them. They never wrote me back. Weird. Wait, what? Yeah. From huh. the Pod Therapy Guy's account. That oh, thing has authority. Wow. Yeah. I didn't give Crazy. a shit. Crazy. And I told them we'll do it for bourbon. Like, just send us a bottle a yeah. month. Yeah. We'll boost I'm your I'm sure that's the first time they've heard that, too. I'm sitting here advertising yeah, it right no now. No one's ever. You know? Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Proposition them with that. Please give us free booze. Um... Yeah, it makes us sound like alcoholics, but all right. <laughs> do you need comp? Or do you need apologies? Uh, okay, so here's my thoughts on this. Because yeah, I kind of feel like I do, 
and I kind of relate to the writer a little bit in this. Yeah. But the writer kind of poses this as an either or proposition, and I don't think it is. Okay. So do I need to just choose and pick my battles, kind of grow thicker skin, as the writer said, or do I need to stick with this and be true to my feelings and really, you know, not demand, but kind of push for an apology when I feel one is due. Right. Those aren't either or. Okay. The solution may be to kind of do both. Yeah. You know, um, and I, I kind of understand this in that, like, sometimes it is, there are some people that just don't, even when they realize that they're wrong, they are more likely to just kind of like, okay, let's just move on and not really come back to it and say they're right. sorry for something. Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost kind of like an implied apology that's not actually spoken. Right. But some people kind of need to hear that. You know, mm -hmm. it is important to some people to actually be able to hear that. And so I think, yeah, I think you do definitely need to kind of pick your battles and figure out what are the things that I feel like I really am owed an apology for, and what are the things that I can kind of pick up on that, I can kind of sense that they're sorry mm. and this is what they do when they are apologetic, even though they don't say it. So for these situations, I'm willing to accept this Yeah. for other things. I'm going to not, not push hard for an apology, but after you know somebody for several years, you can kind of tee it up for them. Yeah. 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 You, know, yeah, you kind of yeah, like, you yeah. kind of like, here it is. Whenever yeah. you want to take a swing at you know, that. I know you didn't mean any harm by that <laughs> thing the other day. I just want to let you know, no big deal. I'm like, Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry about that, man. Oh, no. Oh, no, I wouldn't even no. say, I wouldn't yeah. even say no big deal. Yeah. I would just say, hey, you know, I know you didn't mean anything by that, but here's kind of how I felt about it. Oh, you would just proactively. Well, you're sharing your feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to do it in a way that's manipulative. Like, I don't want to manipulate somebody. Oh, I'm all for them. manipulating the apology. I'll wring it out of you. Yeah. That sounds... like, just so you know, I did get to sleep last night after crying until 3 a.m. Yeah. So I don't want you to worry about that. Oh, and see, for me, if I if I have to ask for an apology, then I, the apology doesn't mean anything to me. Okay. That's... I just think less of someone if they are not adult enough to apologize yeah. when they have done something wrong. Oh, I'm on team apologize. Like, I could have written this letter. because, And, and I don't know if this is a, a common reality that a lot of spouses have. Maybe it's the guy. Maybe it's the girl. In my experience, the women in my life, all of them, do not apologize, okay? If they fuck, they could have killed your dog, could have run over your dog with their car and be like, why'd you let the fucking dog out? It's mm -hmm. like, dude, say you're sorry. Like, this is terrible. Whereas me, I am falling all over myself the minute I make a mistake. I'm so sorry about that. That is my fault. I will make it right. Like, very proactively and very sincerely, I get this letter to the core. Mm -hmm. But I don't relate to the writer about feeling... Like, I would become resent. Well, I probably have gotten resentful. And you sound like, pretty fucking resentful. Yeah. I, yeah, do I? I? It is coming out, isn't Based it? on the yeah. thing you just said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what? Let me think on it. <laughs> I think I think you might be right. I think it does kind of percolate a little bit. I don't know that I sit around needing an apology and can't move on if there isn't one. But I will feel upset if the other person... Okay, here's the difference. A proactive apology is nice. It's enough for me if a person can just say, my bad. I, I was in the wrong on that. My fault. I overestimated this. I made a wrong call. I delayed. We missed this appointment because I wasn't on top of my game. Uh, that's my bad. That's enough for me. You know, and that that is an apology. But just admitting that the fault was yours is plenty. I don't need this proactive, heartfelt apology. Yeah, I think I don't even really need... I, I, I get that. I, I kind of relate to that in a sense. For me, it's more about I want understanding. Okay. I want validation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like when you did this, this caused this to happen for me. Yeah. I want them to understand these right. things that occurred. Yeah. Even if they don't say I'm sorry for doing this, it would be great if they were able to see like, Okay, I see how when this happened, how you were affected. Right. That's all I need. That's fine. Yeah, I Just can live it. with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm I think that that's bad. Like I'm sorry that I caused that that problem in your life or at mm -hmm. least I acknowledge that it happened. 
Jacob, do you, you were just saying a second ago, if they're not proactively apologizing, if you have to come asking for the apology. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything to me. It's already invalidated. Yeah, the, it's, already, the, it's too late. We're done. Will you still ask for an no. apology? No. Will you flag it as, hey, just so you know, I'm, no. I'm, I got some resentment on this. No. This is on my mind. Well, no, with the exception of my spouse. Yeah. Because, like, we have to live together. Right. So, like, we both we both understand that, like, if, if the other one hurts our feelings, like, we have to clear that shit up. Yeah. Just to move on. But you're not doing it for an apology. You're just saying, I need to let you know you we stepped clear on my up. toes earlier. That's it. That's out there now. But if it's a guy who you just happen to do a podcast with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to make it. I'm going to make a middle note of it. I'm going to move on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just on your tally. It's, just, <laughs> it's, it's on the list of shit I'm going to get you yeah. back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, weird. <laughs> it's just, if you just see me over here, just writing down a little something on a, yeah. on a notepad. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it is. Every once in a while, just he just holds off and throws a poker chip at me for no reason. Yeah. Now I realize. Yeah. I should have apologized. That's it. You know, that's that's really on me. I deserved yep. it. Uh-huh. Right in the dome. Yeah, this is a tough one, writer. And, and, you know, I appreciate that you're saying, look, I'm willing to work on myself. I don't want to just make it about the other person. Because, in, in, and I think that that's actually a pretty enlightened perspective, right? Because in real life, none of us can go up to the people that have wronged us in life and start creating a rule and tell them they have to instinctively land on this desire to apologize or make it right. And I agree that it is a more adult behavior to apologize and make something right. But I've also encountered a lot of people in life that I've come to realize they do not do this. And maybe it's because of a character flaw, but sometimes it's because they just do, it does not occur to them that they have stepped on a toe, that they have done something wrong. And that's why... I said what I said. Yeah. Like it, that means more to me if they're able to acknowledge that and right. understand, you know, A led led to B, which led to C, and they can kind of see that connection. Right. Um, obviously, if they see that connection and they're still like, well, I don't, I still don't care. Well, now we've got a bigger issue. In which case, I'm probably just going to cut you from my life. Right. You know. Um, but I think in this particular situation, like, again, like with, with the spouse, I'd like to, that you, it sounds like you kind of have this understanding, like you've had this conversation, like, um, and I think all couples need to have this conversation about how do we fight? Right. Like it's inevitable. It's going to happen, but when it happens, how do we do this? And what are the steps? What do each of us need in order to be able to move on? Yeah. And for you, it sounds like this is very important to you. So her knowing that I think is also really important to say like, Hey, if we're going to move on, this is kind of what I need. Right. And all, and along with that, you should be asking her too, what do you need for us to move on? Because for her, it may not be an apology. It may be Mm -hmm. something different, you know? Right. Um, but and we kind of have to accommodate each other. In There's a meeting in the middle, yeah. right? Because sometimes people will say, yeah, I'll tell you what I need. I need you to forget the fuck over it mm-hmm. and not, and just let this go. You're choosing to simmer on this thing. You're choosing to be miserable. You're choosing to remind yourself of this and, and hold on to resentment. There is a middle ground of mm-hmm. like, I, the, the one who seeks the apology, the, the wronged party, I have a percentage of this. That's my work that I have to work on to bury the resentment, to forgive, to, to move beyond it, to right size the offense. And also to be very mindful of taking offense, Mm -hmm. right? Like that is one of the the keys to sorrow is taking offense at other things. And yet I think it's very healthy and and authentic and correct for a person to say, look, my truth is that I am offended by this. My truth is I am hurt by this. And my truth is that I do really need you to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think that that's a, a character flaw. Like the writer says, oh, I'm kind of sensitive. I'm more sensitive than most men. No, I think a lot of men hold grudges. You know, I think it's on a lot of men's minds. What you're different about, writer, is that you're willing to communicate. And I'd rather you do that than sit around simmering, you know, and, and fuming with this and building up resentment. So between all of your options, I think you're doing the right thing by saying there's a percentage of this I need to diminish on my own. There's a percentage of this I need to report and communicate faithfully to my partner. Then once they have the ball, I need to give them the dignity of making their choices. That may be an apology. That may be sort of, they're not ready to talk about that yet. That may just be that they acknowledge what I'm going through. Fine. And you may not get what you need, but I'm pro you communicating it. Mm -hmm. I think in the end, that is the right move to do. Yep. Thank you for writing in. Great questions today. And a reminder, we are well into, officially, Mental Health Awareness Month. You can go to patreon.com slash therapy. You can support our little project 
And we will reward you for every $10 you are pledging in May. By the way, this retroactively applies to all of our patrons who are in our May bunch. Uh, You will get an entry ticket for our awesome Funko Pops, which you can see pictures of on all of our social media outlets, which is usually at Pod Therapy Guys on Instagram and Twitter. It's slash Pod Therapy on Facebook, and uh, it's at Pod Therapy Guys on Threads. But before we get to the end of the show, because this is the first week of the month, we do want to thank everybody that supports our show, and we want to thank all those Therapods and up. We talk about Robert Paulson, Polygon, Colin. Scoop Chernot, Richard Bruins, Linda Brandmeier, Corey Owens, jo- Joseph Pengrazio, Christine Phillips, Gavin Bristow, Carrie Terhark, Stacey Westerlin, Tracy Replogle, Scoopy Scoopy Jess Jess, Kiwi Fruit Scoop, James K, Chelsea Saracen, Craig Little, Don Dor, Jim Hunter, Take It EV Podcast, Adam Rabisnik, Brooks Lyle, Todd Canfield, Felicia Butler, David Sorensen, Shayla Bullock, Scoopatron, Lauren Izzo, Stacey Coleman, Adam Petanuzo, Matt Lenegren. Scoopiter Ascending, Ian Soto, Jessica Cyphers, That Josh Guy, Lee Popsicle, Dr. Scoop Little, Mama Ninja Scoop, James Dawson, Col- Colson Morrow, Sarah Olo, Grumpy Lake Mead Park Ranger, Sam Buck, Karen McCulloch, Megan Smith, What Weekend, Some Nobody, BP, Lila, Be Gay, Do Crimes, Kelly Gagner, Nippy, Brian Emra, Drew Helligy, Alec Lancaster, Matthew Johnson, A Literal Pickle, Matthias Vandebrandt, James Hubble, Max the Ginger Scoop, Ten- Ken Tinsley, Andreas Saavedra Molina, Water Girl, Julius Kappel, Stacy, Protect and Scoop, Anonymous, Smells Funny, Brady Malichik, Matt Kubik, Duffy the Slowly Getting Their Therapist Bear, Chad Chad the Safety Lad, Walk a Fru- Fluke, Kirkagrim, Feels Right, Irvin Santon, Philip Guyton, Tim Mystery, Almost Dr. Nurse Joy, Joel McMillan, Melissa Geisler, Christopher DeGersey, Trisha Ortiz, Lenny, Chris Conway, Kirsten Johnson, DJ Seward, Seward, nailed it, Mississippi Hippie, Scott A., Fifi, Laura B., Patty Glad, Todd V., Anthony Camerata, Eli, Freya Lawson, Heather W., Kyle, David Williams, Kate Pelize, Mark Orellana, Buddy Dobbins, Eric Dyer, Emma Kane, Trontastic, Adam Warren, Glitch Scoop, Stephen Landon, Shy Ruparel, Alina, Aletta Bailez, nailed it, Kenneth Wong, John Finlayson, Adam Balaz, K. Pizzle Dizzle, Robert Cole, KJ, Mr. Poth, Tasha, Rachel Rakowski, Sincitium, Temporary Reality, Jeff Darnell, Jamibi, Jacob Hurt, Persephone Hazard, Ray J. Shark, Silka Daniels, Recreated, Nathan Mookie, Jenny Rose, Jacob Billingsley, Scoop, Jesus, What Does Scoop Mean, James J., Alex Jardine, Anna Ivanovic, Juan Monterey, Bug Nuts, and Gray, and to all of you Therapods that I just named, Kick in five more bucks, get in the raffle, get to that therodactyl level, at least for May, and we will throw a ticket in the raffle for you. And we want to thank our current therodactyls, Ice Blue Scoop, Brian Lehman, Scott Brady, Fred Bashara Jr., Andrea Anderson, Scoop Lindsay, Frozen Cusser, Lori Eltsroth, Robert Ward, Ryan Stewart, Malachia, Malachia, why did I have two names? Yeah, but it didn't copy and paste right. Uh, David Pollock, Cy Shonigan. Oki Scoop, Dank Butter, Chris, Andrew Langmead, Scott Ashlock, Angie Ellis, Tom Morrison, Lovely Spark, Not a Scoop Solo Cody, TKO, Jim and Manu, Sapphire, Stephen L. Proctor, Tori Snyder, Now and Zen. Love it. As we wrap up the show, I want to remind you, go down to patreon.com slash therapy. You'll get our extended show ad-free a day early, as well as enjoy our live chat Discord community, our weekly deep dives, interviews, skill shares, research roundups, and rants released every Monday. And this month only in May, we will enter you into a raffle to win our collectible Funko Pops of each host, custom made and signed, whether you like it or not. For every $10, you get an extra raffle ticket. So don't forget to jump in there and keep an eye out for all of our announcements on all of our social media as we try to do a lot of interesting things in May and try to make noise for mental health. But we want to thank the benevolent, revered, generous, and flagrantly pro-therapy diehards who love you all so much that they give till it hurts, the Thera Partners, Dirty B, Myra, and Pickett. And we want to thank our bosses, the mysterious and shrouded Illuminati members of the fan club, 
that they're producers. Thank you, Jake Schneider, Robert Brownie Jr. Mint, Spitty Scoop, Ben Don, Judy Schneider, Kayla Lansbury, Mrs. and Mr. Hot Dog Scoop, Malia, Leon Kassab, Mason Miller, Richard Macy, Carolyn Albert, Kevin Chamberlain, Tess Miller, Sammy Scoop, Ben Stanley slapping your face, Sarah Smith, Adam Hathaway, Byler T, University Jeff, Mike Helm, Paris, Samantha Cohn, Darren Cunningham, Lib, Team Monaco, Thunder Cougar, Falcon Scoop, Matt and Lisa Tangeman, Heyo, Oscar Swanrose, A Sunny Boy, Slurpy Kaye, Motherfucker, Sandra McWaffle, Dan Martin, and Hannah Marie. And if you'd like to hear this episode uncut and unedited, and why would you? Pew pew, Texas. Pew, pew. And enjoy our spontaneous side projects. Go to patreon.com slash therapy. And thank you for supporting mental health. We both went Whitney on that. I was going to support you. I was going to be Whitney. Well, you don't usually do that. So no, I, was I don't. Just, I was doing the, doing the bit. This is true. Yeah. yeah. You no, fucked it up. But you're classically Jacob. So somebody oh. needed to be your Whitney. I'm always classic Jacob. Classic. That's all the time we got for this week's session. I want to thank our landlords, Matt Mattingly's Ice Cream Social Podcast. And thanks to those of you who contributed to our show today. We really appreciate it. Remember, pot therapy isn't something to keep all to yourself. Share the episode with someone who needs it. Open the episode. No, that's not true. Go to our socials. <laughs> it's at Pod Therapy Guys on X and Instagram slash Pod Therapy on Facebook. Don't forget about all the extra goodies at patreon.com slash therapy. Do you want to submit a question to the show? Ask anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick Tange. I'm Jim. Thanks, and we'll see you for your appointments next week. I'm Whitney. Pew, pew, Texas. Okay, last four. Oh, yeah. This thing. Denmark. Dutch. Final answer. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember what language Denmark speaks. It's Dutch. You want to, you want to hear the options? Uh, the Netherlands are Dutch. Yes, the Netherlands. That's are different. Dutch. Yes, it is. Fuck. Yeah. I I would like to hear the the options. Okay. Uh, damn it. French, German.